Everyone, welcome into the Clubhouse Chatter Podcast, part of the Just Baseball Network. My name is Kevin Henry, honored to be a member of the Baseball Writers Association of America, and honored today to have Tanner Gordon on with us from the Colorado Rockies. Hey, Tanner, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Kevin? Hey, doing well, man. Appreciate the time, and congratulations on your MLB debut over the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So... I want to start there, but then we're going to work a little bit backwards, if that's all right. Because I know you had quite the contingent there at Coors Field with you. And what was that like, just not only preparing for your MLB debut, but making sure everybody got in the game and you were able to touch base with all of your family and friends who were there? Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was awesome for sure. Um, a little stressful, uh, you know, trying to get everyone tickets, but it, it was a good stress. Um, you know, I, I think I told this to a lot of people, but I talked to my talk to my parents uh, prior to the game and they're like, all right, no, they gave me a head count, you know, 10, 10 people, maybe. Then it just kept growing each hour, each minute. And then I ended up getting to, I think the number was 26, 27. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I ended up getting, I ended up uh, able to get everyone tickets. Uh, it all worked out perfect. You know, they were able to get on the field after the game. Um, you know, they're, they were coming through the tunnel, coming through the dugout, and it seemed like they were just, it was just <laughs> an endless amount of people coming through. Um, you know, it was, it was good. A lot of family, a lot of friends that I haven't seen in a long time. That's a really cool thing. How were you able to balance, you know, the task at hand versus all the other things that were going on, the emotions of your debut and everything else? How were you able to make all that kind of come together for yourself? Uh, it was it was a lot. Like I said, it was it was a lot. But um, I was able to see them in the morning uh, at the hotel before I went to the field. Um, but you know, once I got to the field, it was kind of kind of went through our normal routine. Um, you know, got some food, talked with the guys, had the had the pitchers and catchers meeting, um, and just kind of mentally prepared uh, for the start. Uh, I talked to some of the guys, talked to Nolan Jones. Uh, he helped me out a lot just with the mental side. And um, basically everyone just told me just to enjoy it. You know, don't don't focus on the results. Just enjoy the moment because this is the only debut once. So um, everyone basically just told me to enjoy it. Um, you know, obviously had the, had the butterflies going into it. You know, I'm sure everyone does. But, you know, once I got out into the field and started throwing, then they, they kind of went away. You know, it's kind of kind of turned into just baseball again, which, you know, obviously I've been doing uh, my whole life pretty much. You know, you told us in the dugout before you made your debut that you'd never been to Colorado other than kind of stopping through the Denver airport. So mm -hmm. first time you walk into Coors Field, first time you kind of get the whole grasp of it, what were the emotions there? Uh, it was like, it was breathtaking, honestly, like seeing the clubhouse, seeing how nice the clubhouse was. Um, I guess it was newly renovated as of 2019, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But, but yeah, I, I walked out onto the field um, on Saturday for a stretch and just kind of soaked it all in and looked around. And, uh, again, it was it was breathtaking, you know. Just all the the seats, you know, like minor league stadiums, they don't they don't have like the the nosebleeds way up there. So like seeing everything and just everything just kind of felt like on like right on top of you, um, which was really cool. And then you know having that fill up with fans the next day on Sunday was was even better. And you know we we talked to you after your start. You know you get the two punch outs, your first two batters. And one thing that I noticed from the press box is that your changeup really seemed to be so effective early on. Uh, is that is that kind of what you were feeling out there? Was that kind of your go-to pitch during your MLB outing? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I think having my changeup in my back pocket and being able to throw it for a strike um, or a swing and miss whenever I needed to has has been really huge. Uh, I mean, in college, that was that was my main pitch, um, but I think as as my pro career went on, I think I've been able to use it, uh, use it a lot more. And I think it's become better and better as the years, as the years went on. Um, you know, I find in, in some outings that I don't throw that well, I see that I'm not using my changeup. So I think when I use my changeup in there and I'm able to, to get hitters off the fastball get them off any other pitch, I think it, I think it definitely helps the outing. 
So we're going to talk a minute about the trade that brought you to the Rockies, but I'm curious, yeah. what's been the biggest lesson that you've learned during your time with the Rockies organization as a pitcher? Man. Um, honestly, I, I, I kind of learned that how, uh, how baseball is a business, you know, like I, I was with the Braves since obviously since I got drafted, um, a lot of best friends that I've played with, a lot of really, really good coaches. Um, they all treated me well. You know, I still talk to a bunch of the guys that I played with with the Braves. And then next minute, I'm, I'm gone. You know, whole new team, whole new staff, new players. And I make a, a lot of new faces. Um, I mean, which I get, you know. Like, like I said, it's a business. And, uh, you know, thing, things got to happen and, and teams got to win ball games. And let's talk about that trade because you and Victor Vodnik both came over from Atlanta to the Rockies for Pierce Johnson in, in a deadline yep. trade deal. And, and I know you said how important it was to have Victor kind of come over with you to have that familiar face. But was it all just a whirlwind at that time, trying to figure out next steps and kind of what was going to be next for your career? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I told someone this, but I was the day I got traded, I had my golf polo on, golf shorts, had my golf bag getting ready to go golfing and I see my phone ring. So I answer it. And five minutes later, I'm not going golfing and I'm going to, I think we're, I think Hartford was in New Hampshire at the time. So I kind of, I kind of stopped and sat down for 10 minutes and just like thought about what happened. I told my roommate, which is, he's actually with the Rockies now too. Um, and, uh, yeah, just kind of called, uh, Called my dad, told him to keep it on the down low until it's everything's official. But yeah, but yeah, it was it was a whirlwind. And then you know that day I had to go pack up all my baseball stuff, and, and Vodnik was there at the time, and we kind of looked at each other and shrugged our shoulders and said, "Here we go," you know, kind of a kind of a new life in a sense. Um, it was funny we we were talking uh, the first day we were in Cincinnati, we got lockers right next to each other, yeah. and Vodnik looked at me and he goes. You know, last year at this time, we were playing with each other in double A in Mississippi. And he goes, now look at us. I was like, you know, Bod, you're right. <laughs> look at us. Now. Look at us now. So it's pretty cool. It was, you know, it's it's good to have a guy there that a uh, familiar face uh, that, you know, you can you can kind of go through with and uh, kind of lean on each other throughout the process. You know, during your time with the Braves and the Rockies, you've worked your way up through each of the levels uh, of the minor leagues. Mm -hmm level did you see as the biggest jump for you uh kind of in terms of competition and what you need to do to refine your game i think i would definitely say the jump from high a to double a was the biggest adjustment for me um you know i had a really good stint in high a came out the gate swinging i had a really i think i was player of the month in 22 got promoted to double A and it was like, I've never played baseball in my life. You know, I was, I was walking guys. I was just giving up hits after hits. And like, I was so confused. I was like, I didn't, I didn't feel like I changed anything, but, but you know, as the, as the level goes up, you know, so does, so does the talent, you know, the, the lineups get harder and guys have uh, guys have approaches at the plate and they, they know what they're doing. So I think just, just getting, games under my belt and you know getting good innings under my belt and building that confidence um was kind of the biggest thing for me and then again just talking to my teammates too and asking them you know how they do it is is the biggest thing so uh so yeah and, and one thing you know whenever you have those moments that maybe things aren't going well how how do you kind of center yourself uh whether it's in the clubhouse afterwards before your next start or whatever it might be, what are some kind of keys to you to maybe flush, but yet learn? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's been a, that's been a big part of my career. My career definitely hasn't been all the way up. It's, you know, I'm sure a lot of guys it's, it's up and down all the time. A lot of downs, a lot of ups. Um, I think the biggest thing is to talk. I think a lot of guys when they're, when they're struggling, they just kind of, I mean, I do the same. I did the same thing for a little bit. Um, they just kind of keep to themselves and just like, they struggle by themselves and they don't ask their teammates. They don't ask their coaches. 
um, who've all, who've also probably gone through the same thing as you. So I think just talking with your teammates and talking with your coaches and just getting, making a plan to where you're not just kind of spiraling and doing the same thing over and over again. Um, another thing too is I don't, I don't tend to watch a lot of video of myself, but if I'm struggling, I'll go back and watch videos of me doing really well. And I think it's like seeing myself throw strikes and strike guys out and having really good outings is another confidence boost to like, Oh yeah, I can, yeah, I can, I can do this. I've done it before. So why can't I do it? Why can't I do it now? So yeah, I think that's, that's one of the big things that, that I've done throughout the career, my career. So how do you prep for your next start? Uh, you know, it's supposed to come in New York against the Mets. What do you take from mm -hmm. that first start in Colorado that then you take to the Queens? Yeah, what I'm going to take from that first start is uh, how I attacked. I think I obviously I threw a ton of strikes. Um, maybe some of the strikes were a little bit too quality strikes in certain counts um, to where guys were able to get hits. But, um, I mean, the main goal is I'm, you know, I'm going to attack as much as I can and, and – and throw quality strikes uh, in, in good counts. Um, obviously, look at the scouting reports. I've never, I've never faced the Mets. Obviously, um, and again, talk to uh, talk to the catchers, talk to other starters that have played against the Mets um, a bunch, and um, you know, get feedback from them and kind of kind of take notes. Um, I try not to cram too much before outings. You know, I kind of um, maybe like the day, the night before few days before I'll, uh, I'll start reading up on the scouting reports and whatnot, but yeah, you know, I, I try not to, I try not to, uh, study as much, you know, I, I, I feel like I don't want to make it feel like it's a test, you know, like a, like a pop quiz or something, you know, going into the game. I want to have a free mind and uh, kind of get like the feel of the game and, and go through it. And that's that. After all the whirlwind in Colorado on Sunday, you're not pitching in the series against the Reds, so you've got some time in Cincinnati. Is that good for yeah. you just to kind of be able to take it all in and kind of get used to the what it takes in the majors? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's been really nice to to just sit in the dugout and be in that environment and soak it in and get used to it and um, and just just talk about the game, you know. Um, Talk with Ryan Feltner a lot yesterday during BP. He just gave me some some tips on what he does, how he thinks, how he approaches uh, his starts. And um, I think there, I mean, there's definitely been a lot of that uh, with with this group of guys. Um, it's there's been a ton of support with me, um, ton of support with the rookies, me and me and Aaron. Um, but yeah, that's that's another thing too. Me and Shunk have been talking a lot, obviously, because we've we played together for the past four or five months, uh, a little bit last year too, and um, you know having him there too is is pretty nice. So you know we're we're kind of feeling the same feelings right now. You know sometimes it doesn't feel real, and we kind of have to remind ourselves like, hey, like we're the big leagues right now. So like, you know, yeah. I know you got some chances in spring training to kind of show the Rockies what you could do on the mound. How important were some mm -hmm. of those spring training outings to where you are right now? Do you think? I think they're I think they're really big. You know, early on I I started backing up games, and my first backup game I remember it was a packed stadium, and I walked out there and I was I wasn't even playing in it. You know, I was just out there just backing up. So like small chance I was going to throw. I, but I walked out and I felt the the pulse of the crowd and I felt everything and I was a little overwhelmed. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was kind of glad I was able to experience that and not have to throw that day. Um, when I kind of walked out there and I, I got that like pre start feeling for some reason. I was like, this is, I was like, I guess it's good. I'm out here now instead of you know <laughs> getting thrown into it and having to throw. Um, but you know, I, I think I backed up a few days in a row and then I mean, the second second time I went out there, I said, "Okay, this is familiar familiar enough to where I'm not a little overwhelmed." And then um, ended up starting that one game in spring training, and I think by that time I had five or six backup games under my belt, which is you know not saying much, but I was able to again experience that environment and feel the crowd and all that, and um, I think that definitely helped a lot. Um, it definitely helped a lot, you know, coming here too, 
you know, it's, it's uh, obviously a little different in spring training, but having that, having that feeling of the, of the crowd, I think the crowd makes the biggest difference in all this. Um, it, it help a lot. And last question for you. I know uh, you could start, you can make your second start anywhere, but to have it in New York. And if I, if I'm right, your girlfriend is a nurse in New York. She, uh, yeah, she is. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. so, yeah. so I know you're going to have some support right there uh, in Queens. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The, the stars aligned in, in that sense. But uh, I think, I think I'm fixing to have another pretty big uh, group oh. coming. I know my parents are going to come again. Yeah. Um, girlfriend's obviously going to come there. Uh, my, my roommate from junior college, um, probably a handful of other people. So there'll probably be another 15, 20 people there potentially. So, which is, which is nice. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, luckily you've, you've got the feel for the ticket run now. So that, that should be Yeah, exactly. Good. Exactly. It would be smooth sailing. <laughs> well, Hey Tanner, thanks so much for the time today, man. Best of luck to you in New York and really appreciate you talking. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And thanks to all of you listening to this episode of the Clubhouse Chatter Podcast. We'll be back next week with another episode. So I hope you'll join us then.